This presentation is about composite materials for wind turbine blades. After this lecture, you will be able to describe the use of unidirectional composites for wind turbine blades, calculate the stiffness and strength of a composite material, estimate the fatigue limit of a composite. Composites consist of two material phases, a very brittle and a soft uh, and a uh, ductile material. The brittle is stiff, strong, but also a very brittle behavior, where we can see that uh, example on a tensile curve here. Here we can see that the, that the stresses is actually rather unpredictable and actually given by the biggest flaw in the material. On the other hand, the soft phase, which is a matrix material, is weak and ductile, as illustrated on the green curve. Mixing these two materials together, then we get a stiffness and a strength, which are in between the two phases. But the strength is now predict predict uh, predictable, and we can use this in the design of a structure. We will never imagine designing something of pure glass. If you look into the cross section of a wind turbine blade, then this is an illustration of this. We can see that the load carrying part is shown as green materials here at the three or four spots. The requirement for the material is high stiffness in order to avoid bending of the blade and high fatigue resistance of the material. If you take a close look into the material inside the blade, then we can see that the unidirectional composite is built up of uh, fiber bundles consisting of thousands to 10,000 of fibers. The fibers have normally a diameter between 10 to 20 if you look at glass fiber, or between 5 and 10 if you look at carbon fiber. The stiffness of composites can be predicted uh, using a low called rules of mixture. If you look into a composite, a unidirectional composite, then it's shown here as an X-ray scan of the fibers. This composite can be considered as perfectly aligned fibers in, in a matrix material. The fiber material have a stiffness called EF and a matrix called EM. The volume fraction of the fiber and the matrix is a value between 0 and 1, where 0 is no material and 1 is fully uh, of this material. The sum of the two is therefore equal to one. When we are stra straining the material in the fiber direction, then the straining of the fiber and the matrix will be equal to its other. And therefore, we can consider the material as two independent phases, where we have a strain of the matrix and a strain of the fiber equal to its other. Now we can calculate the stiffness of the composite as the volume fraction of a fiber multiplied with the stiffness of a fiber plus the volume fraction of the matrix multiplied with the stiffness of the matrix. And by this, we get the root of mixture showing here. If we are plotting the stiffness of the composite as a function of the volume fraction, then we can see that the stiffness is a linear relation going from the matrix stiffness without any fibers up to the fiber uh, stiffness for only fibers. If instead of the knowledge of the volume fraction of fiber, have the knowledge of the stiffness of the, of the composite, for example, by doing some measurement, then we can calculate the volume fraction of the fiber based on the equation here derived from the rules of mixture. Here we have that there's a stiffness of the composite, stiffness of the matrix, and stiffness of the fiber. Conventional composites is not common in the whole range of uh, volume fraction. Normally, we are only considering composites in between 50 to 60 percent fibers. If we look at the stiffness in the transverse direction of the fiber, then we cannot anymore use uh, the uh, we can not anymore use that the straining of the two phases is equal to its other. Instead, we get the inverse uh, rules of mixture showing here. This will result in a stiffness variation shown at the curve here, where we can see that the stiffness is much lower. Therefore, we have an anisotropic material behavior which is a big, big difference in the stiffness in the fiber direction and in the transverse direction. 
The Wusser mixer can also be used for determining the density of the composite. Regarding tensile strength of the composite, then we can still look at the material as consisting of the two phases of the fiber and the matrix, and we can use the knowledge that the straining of the two phases will be equal to its other. Therefore, loading up the composite with the wet curve up to the failure, then we will get reach the failure when one of the phases, phases is failing and the other phase cannot uh, carry the load. This will normally be the case for the fiber, which is a more brittle material than the matrix material. The straining can be calculated as the strength of the fiber divided by the stiffness of the fiber. When we would like to predict the strength of the composite, then we need to take into account the stresses in the matrix at the failing point. So not the strength of the matrix, but the stresses in the matrix at the failing point for the fiber, which can be calculated as the straining of the fiber at failure multiplied with the stiffness of the matrix. This can be summed again using rules of mixture, where we have volume fraction of fiber multiplied with the strength of the fiber plus the volume fraction of matrix multiplied with the stresses in the matrix at the failing point. Finally, we can look at the fatigue behavior of a composite material. The fatigue behavior cannot be predicted in the same way as the stiffness and the strength of the composite. Instead, we must rely on experimental measurement. Here is shown such a setup, where we have the test sample uh, in between the grips uh, for a tensile machine uh, test, uh, setup. We will now load the material in, with an oscillating load, given by uh, a sign variation between a max load and a minimum load. And when we talk about fatigue properties, then we are talking about a R ratio, which is describing the ratio between the max and mean, uh, the mean and max value of the loading. If you do this at different load levels, then we will ca can count the number of cycles onto failure, and we can plot that on a diagram. Here shown six samples tested at different stress levels, and then reported the, the number of cycles for failure for the individual test. We have one extra test here, which is something we call a one-out test, where we have tested at a stress level, but we didn't get failure until the point where we stopped the test. For this test uh, points, we can do a fitting of a curve, and we normally get a relation looking like this, where we have the number of failure, number to failure, given by a constant multiplied with the stress we are putting on, the max stress we are putting on the sample in a uh, photon here, where we are measuring the maximum stress in megapascal. This relation, which is experimental determined for this specific composite material, can now be used predicting the number of cycles for a given stress level. In this lecture, you have learned how to Describe the use of unidirectional composite in a wind turbine blade. Calculate the stiffness and strength of a composite material. Estimate the fatigue limit of a, uh, of a composite.